It is high noon in beautiful Rock Hill, South Carolina. Yeah, I'm late by two minutes, but y'all know I'm trying to get packed. You're in tune to 710 Radio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. We're going to do these couple of quick announcements so you can go ahead and get that medible, that blunt, that bait, that dab, because you don't want to go nowhere, because guess who we got in the building? We got Luke, and not that Luke you're thinking about. We'll talk more about that when we get back. Are you feeling like a shadow of yourself? Is your mood on its way down? You could be suffering from low THC, also known as cannabinoid deficiency, caused by 77 years of government interference via prohibition. Do you live in a medical cannabis state or the District of Columbia? Are you over the age of 18 and seeking non-toxic natural health, well-being, and peace of mind? Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. After 10,000 years of recorded human use and 77 years of failed prohibition on the world's most extensively tested plant, the results are in. Cannabis has no known lethal dose and is arguably the safest and most comprehensive therapeutic substance known to man. Cannabis remained in the United States from until 1941, and cannabinoids are currently patented by the federal government as an anti-inflammatory U.S. patent 6630507. Human brains have cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoids are lubricants in the human body. Due to prohibition, our bodies have been denied essential lubrication. Imagine never changing or adding to the oil in your car. The use of cannabis for low THC may cause immediate relief, including a general feeling of well-being, chronic smiling or laughing, feelings of euphoria, increased creativity or clarity, a greater appreciation for music and art, the desire to dance, increased feelings of inspiration, compassion or unity, a need for truth and justice, or you may wake feeling more well-rested than usual. It's undetermined to know exactly how many symptoms the use of cannabis may alleviate because of federal prohibition. There were dozens identified in the 1909 Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Handbook. Currently, over 80% of the population supports the right to use cannabis therapeutically, and 92% of its users have declared significant non-toxic relief. The most common side effects, which are usually mild to moderate and may fade or disappear completely over time, are dry mouth and drowsiness. Other more serious side effects can include growing and repairing brain cells and DNA or improved vision, may prevent Alzheimer's dementia, dementia, glaucoma, nausea, and suicide may provide relief from autism, asthma, anorexia, arthritis, AIDS, cancer, Crohn's, depression, epilepsy, fibromyalgia, gout, IBS, insomnia, MS, migraine, pain, Parkinson's, PTSD, and spasticity. Use caution while driving or doing other physical activities until you know how cannabis affects you. May cause paranoia or nervousness specifically caused by real-life government intervention in your quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the USA. Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. Brought to you as a public service announcement by The People's Plant, a campaign of conscience. Hi, my name is Ricky Williams. My name is Evan Britton. My name is Mark Costelli. My name is Boo Williams. My name is Jim McMahon. My name is Chris Cluey. My name is Kyle Turley. I played in one of the major North American football leagues. I have two championship rings from that big game we play at the end of the season. In college, I won a trophy that looks like this. I was a punter for eight seasons, and punters are football players too. I also wrote the name of the commissioner on my headband, and everyone lost their shit. The men who play American football are subject to a life of injury, pain, and disease, both during and long after their careers are over. And that's why I smoke pot. That's why I smoke cannabis. That's why I smoke weed. That's why I smoked weed when I played. It has, without a doubt, reduced the amount of pain I live with. It's my body. I know. But for some reason, the major North American non-Canadian football league refuses to allow players to use cannabis. Instead of allowing for safe, natural healing, The sport pushes players towards addictive narcotic painkillers with serious side effects. So let's Let's get get real, Roger. Roger. Football players should be allowed to use medicinal marijuana. Without the stigma of it being a banned substance. Cannabis isn't a drug. It is a medicine. And we're back. You're in tune to 710 Radio, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. I have the man in the building, Mr. Luke. How are you doing today? Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Oh, man, I am so hyped up right now. I am getting my bags is packed and everything is ready to go. I've confirmed my ride. My ride told me what time we're leaving out. Matter of fact, we're going to be doing the show live on the road. You hear me? We're going to be broadcasting while we're rolling down on the road tomorrow morning because we got 420 Gym segment we do on Wednesdays on the Wake and Bake show. So I don't know if this is a first of its kind, but it's going to be a first for me actually doing a show on the road, on the air. That's cool. That's cool. I'm excited for you to be going back to your home state. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Man, you're talking about excitement. Oh, my God. Speaking of that, in those sesh, if you ain't got your VIP passes, you better get them now. They got only 20 left. Well, wait a minute. Wow. I just got a report. Hang on. Somebody just hit me up. Oh, they got down. They're down to 15 left. Y'all better hurry up and get them. Okay, go ahead. I had to go ahead and put that out there real quick. Uh, so 
man, that's exciting. I'm excited for you. That is way cool. So I'm going to, just found out yesterday, I'm going to Detroit in June. Oh, wow. Canicon. Oh, that is so cool. I'm going to have to give you some people to hook up with um, before um, you go to Canacon from Minorities for Medical Marijuana. Okay. Yeah, because they're yeah, going to be there as well. Link them through the website, and anybody that wants to contact us can always hit us on Facebook, Instagram, the website, or call me, write us. We just got a, um, my art, on top of exciting news, on top of exciting news, it's been crazy for the past two weeks. We were getting a um, property up in Waltham, Pennsylvania. What? Yeah, we were just gifted a uh, house on some property, and um, it's our new world headquarters for Oshie's Law. Oh my and God! Congrats. Our main base, of the, our main office will be. We will still have. Here's what's exciting, though, is we will still have our office here in Central PA. We will still be working with these people. We will be opening an office near Lancaster here in the next month, and we will also be opening a office in California. What? Yeah, hey. so we um, have some pretty cool things going on right now with us, and it's I been see. amazing. I, w- I was in Pittsburgh this weekend at the World Medical Marijuana Conference, and we were there a few hours, and it was phenomenal. You know, it's so great to see things happening over here on the East Coast. Um, we got to meet some really cool people finally. Lori out of Ohio. I cannot say her name right, and I don't want to say it wrong. So I'm just going to say Lori from Ohio. Um, we did a live feed with her yesterday. It was so cool to meet her in person. Her excitement and her energy is just phenomenal. We need more people like that. And she really brought up a good and got me going again on... You know, we need to, it's not near holiday, it's not near nothing, but we need to still recognize the homeless, we need to recognize mental health, and most importantly, we need to recognize our vets. Because, and the truth of it is, they're the ones suffering by the government that they fought so hardly for this country. And it's sad with the opiate crisis going on right now, and how cannabis can actually do good to this and how we need more people like that all over this country raising this awareness and, and getting in these legislators' cases and doing our part as people that need this plant, that want this plant, that don't need bullshit, stupid laws to go with this plant. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, I know exactly what you're saying. And thank you for um, recognizing the fact that mental illness and um, the military do go kind of hand in hand especially with post-traumatic stress disorder. And when you got the American Legion jumping on to support the passage of medical cannabis, that's huge. So what the, what the point is is this. We have a brown bag campaign that goes on. Anywhere, an average veteran that's over the age of 50 is least, got at least eight medications, and I guarantee you one of them is a hard narcotic of some shape, form. And the problem is is this. What people won't realize is that the United States government has made the veterans and soldiers active duty reserve or whatever. If you go into the VA, you're a guinea pig. A lot of people don't want that to be told, but it's true. That's where we need to also, I mean, we're doing all these great things throughout the country and the world with, with this plant and people like us that have really made impacts as raising awareness and education and being loud about it in a public eye is we need more of that because what we need to do for <coughs> our veterans besides give them the choice to use this plant is we need to we need to demand that the VA do an overhaul of its care system for our vets. When I was on the island out on the west coast before I came here to PA, I actually got to um, take care of a veteran. And to see the response and the, the, the shit that we had to go through to the VA was just nonsense. No wonder so many give up. Yeah. They just want to go live on the street. Yeah, it's because, I mean, like, they have a program set up that's supposed to give veterans a chance to get their homes financed through the VA program. If you ain't got stellar credit, you don't get it. Um, other programs that sign up for veterans, it's, it's, it's a, a need-to-know basis. 
I hate to say it, but it's true because the fact is, if you ain't in with the right group of people, you don't know about this information. That's why programs like Grow for Vets and We for Warriors, those are just two examples of uh, groups that I support personally for the fact is that we need more people out there to be aware of the situation. We lose over. I used to say we lose 22 vets a day. No, we lose way more than 22 vets a day due to suicide alone. We don't know if it's opioid induced, but most likely it is. Opioid with the use of alcohol. They don't want to let you know this, but the military does push alcohol upon you. They used to push cigarettes. Trust me, I know about this. Um, with the different events that they go to, like the military balls, this ball is heavily alcoholic events with the grog bowl, with the wine ceremonies and the toastings and everything. Sure, they're not making you toast with the wine, but still it's there and it's an option. And if you're in the um, whatever branch of the service you're in, I'm just going to speak from what I've seen in the balls in the army. Yeah, they've had people go take several drinks at this grog bowl that has who knows under the sun of alcohol that's in there. So, yeah, they have surrounded the veteran, the soldier, and everybody else with this type of lifestyle. And then after 20 or 30 years, this lifestyle stops. Okay, what do this soldier does then? He's addicted. He's addicted to pain pills and he's addicted to alcohol. Those are two problems that the military or the VA will not address and they're dead wrong. They need to address both of them until they cut out those functions. I'm not saying cut them out completely, but cut them back. I know their tradition, but that's part of the problem. And, and it's sad too because <clears throat> majority of, I, I mean, I, I have PTSD and I, I, I didn't serve. My PTSD is life circumstances, but the mental health of it, the struggle of it was the pharmaceuticals that I was, was on. They're not, they're not there to benefit you. They're there just to keep you there and keep you stigma in the system so they can continue using you for a guinea pig. And it truly is. I've been off of pharmaceuticals now for a few years, and I have never felt so amazing in my life. Well, Luke, I, I, I wish I could say that. that. I had to go I'm back too. on them. Unfortunately, well, I had to go back on them because I'm here. I mean, when I was out there in Colorado with you, I came off my blood pressure medication, I came off my cholesterol medication, I came off my um, my mood stabilizers for my post-traumatic stress disorder, I came off, the doctors took me off all that because I didn't need it. Now I'm right. back on all that and then some. So, and, and, you know, that's, that's so, so there's so many stories like ours, it's not even funny. I'm, I was a resident of Indiana when this started almost five years ago. I had to leave. I had to leave to go and be where it was legal. And that's why I've been all over this country educating because it, it, it's, you know, I wouldn't be alive today if it weren't for this plant on a couple different reasons. And I've been very blessed where this journey has taken me and the people that I have met and worked with. Working with you in Colorado was amazing, Rosemary. And it, it's something that needs to continue going and being loud with the mental health and the veterans because, like I said, they're the ones that fought for this country that are demanding them to stay in these opiates or out. You know, and that's the thing, too, that we need to overhaul with, with the VA system is that if these people want to choose to use medical marijuana, cannabis, hemp, whatever the hell they want to label it as, let them do so. Give them an ultimatum that if they do so, they lose all their benefits and this and that. And no wonder they're homeless. And they would rather be that way because they get this choice to use this plan. When I was in Huntsville, Alabama a couple of years ago, we did a thing with Stand Down for Vets. And um, that was one of the things that really caught my attention was how the people that are homeless couple of them are there because they want to be there so they don't have to deal with the VA. They don't want to deal with the government, the system, the country that they fought so hard for. You know, and that's part of mental health. Give them the right to choose this medicine no matter where they stand. No matter if it's in Washington, Colorado, California, PA, it doesn't matter. You know, and we need more people out here fighting for those rights. And even when 
the, the tides turn to where recreational comes into play, they're still patients. We're still patients. You're still a patient. I'm still a patient. You know, and that's what what is so important to keep that message loud and going. Because once they have that access, it is going to change their lives. Exactly. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's a tightrope that a lot of us have to walk because you got people, you know, I'm for everybody using cannabis. First and foremost, let me make that perfectly clear. Um, But when you're in a state like I'm in in South Carolina, when we speak to our officials, we have to say, and believe me, it chokes me up to say it, but when I go before these legislators, I have to let them know I am for medical only. Does it make me feel good to say it? No, but that's the only thing they're going to want to hear. And as of now, they're not really trying to hear that. It, 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 it sucks that it, it has to be that way, too, because I've always, and I, I started this journey with this common law idea. Just give us the right to choose. It doesn't matter. I want to do it without having to cost me an arm and a leg in my family ranch to be a part of it. <coughs> well, if I have that right. And when I say this has changed mental health for me, five years, Rosemary, you've seen us do a lot of things all over this country, and I have done my I think as a nonprofit in doing this grassroots, which has been the most productive thing this period of time ever positive in my life. And that's because I've done it without pharmaceuticals. I mean, that's amazing right there. I think about this. I went through three marriages. Um, yeah, and how many jobs, how many places I've had to relocate, blah, 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 because of mental health, because of pharmaceuticals. Being on 12, 13, 14, 22 pills a day, you're not really doing nothing but just sitting on a couch somewhere trying to figure out what to do. That's exactly. You are That's you are so I dead did. on the head on that because I think about, I think my last straw is when we met and I met you in 2014 in Colorado. I was at, when I say breaking point, I do mean breaking point is this. I was having total memory loss. I would get in my car on Interstate 77 going between Rock Hill and Charlotte. Halfway between Rock Hill and Charlotte, I've been, I forgot which direction I'm supposed to be going. What am I even doing there? You know, why am I driving? I mean, that is really scary. Part of my trip going to driving there, I can't remember because I still had the, the, a tramadol in my system. When I came back from off the mountain, I guess you could say from off the mountaintop back to back to uh, to South Carolina, back down to the fertile ground, as you would say, or however you want to put that. Um, my husband noticed my clarity. He noticed, you know, that I was more alert. He noticed a lot of things about me that he didn't notice because of all the pills. And so when we, you know, we, I got back and we sat down and we talked and we had a discussion and I showed him a lot of things that, you know, we had did there in Colorado and what the doctors had said. This is what really got him is what the doctors were saying about before and after in my medical records. And when you got proof like that, you know, your cholesterol drops, your overall health. I was able to maintain whilst I was there. I maintained two jobs. I also did the show. I did two shows a day. Matter of fact, because I did my uh, 840 AM and then I did the um, the uh, midday burn sometimes. Sometimes we do the whole midday burn. So, like I said, then on top of that, we were doing events in Denver and Colorado Springs because um, Monday nights was water bowl night. So, like I said, how you can't, you know, in my condition, when I have a total knee replacement, I have um, post-traumatic stress disorder, military-related. Um, no, I did not see combat, and that's what a lot of people got to realize. You can have PTSD and never seen combat. Trust and believe me on this. Um, it's just so much other stuff I was able to do. I was active in the community. I helped feed the homeless. There's so many things. This thing has changed my life. And when I say cannabis did save my life, I was ready to commit suicide because the, the medicine just had me coming and going so bad. I didn't know which way was up or down. And then the fact is, wondering why I was staying so sick. Coming to find out is that the medications that the BA was giving me call itself helping me. So am I ever looking back to that? No. 
No, I got, I mean, that's why when South Carolina did not pass the law recently, I seriously had to pay attention and seriously take a look at getting out of here, Luke. I'm fighting to save my life right now, believe it or not. Well, um, I would love to hear Indiana say, we have a medical program established or something so I could go home with me and my kids. That's what I'm fighting for. And sadly, I have to go from another state to where I have to be a card holder because, again, it's about being compliant. Mm -hmm. And that's the stigma I'm trying to break as well on this journey is I may use cannabis to, to manage my mental health, but I'm much more safer on cannabis and I'm a father, I'm a friend, I'm a productive member of society. I mean, holy crap, my drive record speaks for itself. I stay busy fighting for everybody. Um, so it's, it's, there's so much further we have to go, you know. That's why we need to also remind and keep fighting the federal government to take this damn plan off a of schedule. What are you scheduling besides 427 and all the very shit? Get it off. You know? You know. Nobody should have to be in jail for this plan. Nobody should have to get a ticket. Nobody should have to be in court because of this plan. Yep, and our president of the United States say he wants to make America great again. He said he's going to take a handoff approach. Mr. President, this is uh, me speaking to you once again, which I normally don't like to do. But you want my support? Go ahead and take it off of Schedule 1. It should never be scheduled. Like Luke said, it is a plan. It is a medicine that helps people. I am living, breathing proof. If they want to look at my medical records from last year where I had total knee replacement surgery and used cannabis as pain relief, I have proof that is living, walking, breathing proof, and I'm getting ready to do it again. Now, you think about it. I'm talking about another knee replacement on a different leg, Luke. Most people would say I'm crazy. But that's why I am trying to get myself arranged and ready. I am trying to find a place in Florida so I can go ahead and, you know, when I have my surgery in South Carolina, be transferred to Florida so I can be in compliance because I am not trying to have these people coming in here taking me to jail and I can't walk. Right. And it's sad that we have to do stuff like this, but it's so very important because it's like this. If I take the pain medication that they give me, I would not be here. I have a heart condition on top of everything else I'm going through. And I know what codeine and cocaine and all this other stuff does to your heart muscle. They know this too. So, who's most educated, me or them? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm taking a chance even having this surgery done. I had to go through the all the testing and stuff just to make sure my heart is strong enough so i am not trying to put oh, excuse me no extra strain on my heart or my body or my mind worrying about if i walk out my door am i gonna get thrown down to the ground because i'm trying to stay well they just had a recent bug bus here um not in this somewhere here in south carolina i forgot the location right off hand but it was around the seventh of April and the sheriff said plainly we're letting everybody know marijuana is not legal here so when you hear stuff like that that just shoots my post-traumatic stress disorder in the full tilt because I'm like oh my god are they gonna come after me next and that's something I live with every day it's crazy it's crazy how many people are suffering with this and why it's so important to be loud and be proud and, and be screaming to legislation and representatives and whoever you can get through your email or your phone. And trust me, they're easy to find. All you have to do is just want the, want the, the energy and the motivation to have the choice to, to choose this plant, you know? Exactly. But see, I'm going to take it one better. I just um, e I just emailed my city council member, um, let him know that I am going to Florida and I am documenting everything and I'm documenting reasons I'm moving so they can decrim small amounts of uh, cannabis here in York County. Or oh, I got to go, you know. And on top of that, I'm going to be finding me a lawyer because I will be suing the state of South Carolina. Why? Breach of affection. That is a law they have here in South Carolina. And the point of it is this. I've been with my husband going on 31 years. Why should I have to separate from my husband to be well? And we have a home here. 
So I'm just tired of playing the games. I'm tired. I, I'm tired of asking for something I shouldn't have to ask for. My husband and myself both defended the Constitution of the United States of America. We both raised our right hand to make sure the United States of America was protected. Now we're not even being protected in our own home state. This is his home state. My home state has medical cannabis. So in other words, it's like this. We have to separate for me to be well, which is not right. So South Carolina, get ready to pay for my movement expenses and everything else, cause I'm finna get right to sue the shit out you. You got that on live air today, because I'm done. I'm done, man. I, I, I'm just so done. And nobody should have to feel this way. Nobody should have to separate from their family, their friends. I'm leaving grandkids behind. Three of my grandkids are over in North Carolina. Now they're gonna have to make the extra. 12 hours to come see their grandmother because South Carolina decided, oh, we ran out of time this legislation season. So yes, I'm very bitter about it. Extremely bitter. That I had to wind up moving again because I was promised that this was going to happen. My husband felt so much about this state that he loves that, oh, Rose, this is going to happen for us. Y'all let him down. I already knew what was coming on the horizon. Y'all let my husband down, and that's where I'm done with y'all. You know, because he believes so much into his state. And I told him Florida would get it first. So now he's got to hear the dreaded words that most of you men hate to hear. I told you so. Crazy. It's crazy how people have to relocate and move their lives just to have this plan too you know nobody should have to do this nobody should have to do or endure what we do and I think that's why we're so good at what we do is because we fight so passionately mm -hmm. I wouldn't want this to happen to anybody me either this is the worst I mean this is the, the time we're at right now with uh, both of us we should be getting ready to settle in he's getting ready to retire off a second job he retired after 26 years in the army and now he's getting ready to retire off another job this should be the time that he's looking forward to us going fishing or whatever the case may be that he wants to do. Not that I'm out here being an activist, out here having to fight just to stay well. This is not something I signed up for long term. I thought five years from now, five years. When I started this back in 2012, I thought by 2018 this would be over. It is not even close. Even if I did move to Florida, for example. Let's use Florida, for example. I'm looking at moving home. And if I do that, I still got to deal with the fact that if they decide they want to go wreck, we have to fight for that to stay medical. Because we both know if they go wreck, the medical patient gets doesn't get looked at as much. They kind of slowly but surely just sweep us to the wayside. So that's another thing that you know people fail to realize. The fight never stops. It constantly continues. You constantly have to change laws. You have to constantly change rules. And Florida is finding that out. And what I can't wait to go home and talk to people about Florida about. I hear a lot of crying and complaining in the state of Florida about how they feel about this plant. And like I tell them, look, you got something we don't have here in South Carolina. Y'all have dispensaries. Y'all have um, doctors that's willing to say cannabis can help you. We don't have none of that. And that's the point I'm going to drive home when I, you know, when I go to talk. You know, I'm going to talk about amendment too. I'm going to talk about my, my journey um, on the cannabis roadways and highways and byways. Would I trade in of it? Hell no, because I think about how many lives I have touched and helped over the last five years. And if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't a heartbeat. Because the point is, is this, just because I don't wear that uniform anymore, don't say I don't supposed to do my job. And this is my job as of now 24 seven until everybody, like I always said, nobody's free until we all free. I don't care if I'm living in a free medical state. If you're living in a state that's not medically sound far as cannabis is concerned, yes, I'm still going to be fighting for you. No matter where I live at. And see, and that's why I, I also, you know, I've, I've also encouraged and I, I tell people, if, just because you're in a safe state, like I'm in Pennsylvania, I can be safe, I can go to the dispensary, have my medicine, and just be hunky-dory with life. 
but no, I, I find myself traveling to places to help educate and bring better that right to those people too because it is important and those people that are fighting for it, maybe they need your input. Maybe they need your your story to help convince the right people to change the laws. You know, it's important because we all are in this together. It ain't about, oh, downtown Colorado's fun, it's there, we're good. You know, it ain't about, we're fine on the island out on Washington, don't worry about it. No, step up that comfort zone. Come and help other people. Go help other people that need these same rights as well. You yeah, know? Exactly. Hey, Luke, we're going to go ahead and take that little break that we talked about. Hey, guys, I know we don't gave y'all a lot of information. It's now 32 minutes, uh, 33 minutes after the hour. We're going to go ahead and let you go ahead and be able to go grab your bag, grab a medical, grab, you know, you might have to go to run run right around the corner and grab one from Ray Ray real quick. We're going to give you an opportunity to do this. We're going to give you exactly four minutes. So get ready, get set. Commercial time. Are you feeling like a shadow of yourself? Is your mood on its way down? You could be suffering from low THC, also known as cannabinoid deficiency, caused by 77 years of government interference via prohibition. Do you live in a medical cannabis state or the District of Columbia? Are you over the age of 18 and seeking non-toxic natural health, well-being, and peace of mind? Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. After 10,000 years of recorded human use and 77 years of failed prohibition on the world's most extensively tested plant, the results are in. Cannabis has no known lethal dose and is arguably the safest and most comprehensive therapeutic substance known to man. Cannabis remained in the United States from until 1941, and cannabinoids are currently patented by the federal government as an anti-inflammatory U.S. patent 6630507. Human brains have cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoids are lubricants in the human body. Due to prohibition, our bodies have been denied essential lubrication. Imagine never changing or adding to the oil in your car. The use of cannabis for low THC may cause immediate relief, including a general feeling of well-being, chronic smiling or laughing, feelings of euphoria, increased creativity or clarity, a greater appreciation for music and art, the desire to dance, increased feelings of inspiration, compassion or unity, a need for truth and justice, or you may wake feeling more well-rested than usual. It's undetermined to know exactly how many symptoms the use of cannabis may alleviate because of federal prohibition. There were dozens identified in the 1909 Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Handbook. Currently, over 80% of the population supports the right to use cannabis therapeutically, and 92% of its users have declared significant non-toxic relief. The most common side effects, which are usually mild to moderate and may fade or disappear completely over time, are dry mouth and drowsiness. Other more serious side effects can include growing and repairing brain cells and DNA or improved vision, may prevent Alzheimer's dementia, glaucoma, nausea, and suicide may provide relief from autism, asthma, anorexia, arthritis, AIDS, cancer, Crohn's, depression, epilepsy, fibromyalgia, gout, IBS, insomnia, MS, migraine, pain, Parkinson's, PTSD, and spasticity. Use caution while driving or doing other physical activities until you know how cannabis affects you. May cause paranoia or nervousness specifically caused by real-life government intervention in your quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the USA. Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. Brought to you as a public service announcement by The People's Plant, a campaign of conscience. Hi, my name is Ricky Williams. My name is Evan Britton. My name is Marcus Stelly. My name is Boo Williams. My name is Jim McMahon. My name is Chris Cluey. My name is Kyle Turley. I played in one of the major North American football leagues. I have two championship rings from that big game we play at the end of the season. In college, I won a trophy that looks like this. I was a punter for eight seasons, and punters are football players too. I also wrote the name of the commissioner on my headband, and everyone lost their shit. The men who play American football are subject to a life of injury, pain, and disease, both during and long after their careers are over. And that's why I smoke pot. That's why I smoke cannabis. That's why I smoke weed. That's why I smoked weed when I played. It has, without a doubt, reduced the amount of pain I live with. It's my body. I know. But for some reason, the major North American non-Canadian football league refuses to allow players to use cannabis. Instead of allowing for safe, natural healing, the sport pushes players towards addictive narcotic painkillers with serious side effects. So let's, let's get, get real, real Roger. Roger. Football players should be allowed to use medicinal marijuana. Without the stigma of it being a banned substance. Cannabis isn't a drug. It is a medicine. And we're back. Hey, Luke had to pick up the bud phone. And what that means is this. He got a call from the mayor's office that he needed to look in on. So, um... He won't be able to be back with us, and we understand that. That's part of the being a part of cannabis culture. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to go to the world of Facebook and see what I was posted up in real quick because I know something hit my screen. And let's see what it was. Okay. See if it lets me do that. Oh, okay, great. 
Okay. Thank you, Jose. Jose, um, he's listening to us on um, 710 Radio right now, and we're talking about Indo Sesh. That is correct. Um, we're talking about that, and we're talking about a whole lot of other things today. But I'm on the countdown, and I'm so ready to get there to Indo Sesh. I'm looking forward to, to um, seeing Chef Tony and everybody else that's there. I got family that's going to be coming out. Um, matter of fact, let me tell you something about my family. If you listen to um, my Wake and Bake show um, at 8 a.m., I think it was the second or third show in, my sister uh, happened to call me, and I put her on the phone live. And that is what everybody is talking about is my sister. So you get the opportunity to hear again from her. And matter of fact, she is going to be going to her first event ever. So this is going to be epic. Now make sure you stay close to Facebook Live because we're going to be doing segments on our way to Gainesville to Indo Sesh around the city of Gainesville and everything. We're going to be covering the University of Florida. We're going to cover um, Lincoln, Lincoln Estates. Look out. Your girl's coming home. Yes, we even going through Lincoln Estates. We got security, so I ain't worried about it. <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing. But, um, yeah, so we're going to be covering a lot of places in Gainesville. Um, I can't wait to see the Hardwood Soundstage because I think I know a location where that's at. Let's see. Um, let me go ahead and carry y'all to a quick commercial break. We're in tune to 710 Radio. We'll be right back. Are you feeling like a shadow of yourself? Is your mood on its way down? You could be suffering from low THC, also known as cannabinoid deficiency, caused by 77 years of government interference via prohibition. Do you live in a medical cannabis state or the District of Columbia? Are you over the age of 18 and seeking non-toxic natural health, well-being, and peace of mind? Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. After 10,000 years of recorded human use and 77 years of failed prohibition on the world's most extensively tested plant, the results are in. Cannabis has no known lethal dose and is arguably the safest and most comprehensive therapeutic substance known to man. Cannabis remained in the United States for pharmacopoeia until 1941, and cannabinoids are currently patented by the federal government as an anti-inflammatory U.S. patent 6630507. Human brains have cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoids are lubricants in the human body. Due to prohibition, our bodies have been denied essential lubrication. Imagine never changing or adding to the oil in your car. The use of cannabis for low THC may cause immediate relief, including a general feeling of well-being, chronic smiling or laughing, feelings of euphoria, increased creativity or clarity, a greater appreciation for music and art, the desire to dance, increased feelings of inspiration, compassion or unity, a need for truth and justice, or you may wake feeling more well-rested than usual. It's undetermined to know exactly how many symptoms the use of cannabis may alleviate because of federal prohibition. There were dozens identified in the 1909 Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Handbook. Currently, over 80% of the population supports the right to use cannabis therapeutically, and 92% of its users have declared significant non-toxic relief. The most common side effects, which are usually mild to moderate and may fade or disappear completely over time, are dry mouth and drowsiness. Other more serious side effects can include growing and repairing brain cells and DNA or improved vision, may prevent Alzheimer's dementia, dementia, glaucoma, nausea, and suicide may provide relief from autism, asthma, anorexia, arthritis, AIDS, cancer, Crohn's, depression, epilepsy, fibromyalgia, gout, IBS, insomnia, MS, migraine, pain, Parkinson's, PTSD, and spasticity. Use caution while driving or doing other physical activities until you know how cannabis affects you. May cause paranoia or nervousness specifically caused by real-life government intervention in your quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the USA. Ask your doctor if cannabis may be right for you. Brought to you as a public service announcement by The People's Plant, a campaign of conscience. We're back. Sorry about that. That's somebody calling me all the way from, from Florida asking me about Indo Sesh. Hey, I'm going to give y'all everything you need to know right now. Uh, Indo Sesh is going to be at the Hartwood Soundstage. It's going to be Friday at 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At exactly three days from now, your temperature is looking at to be 75 degrees. Make sure you bring your mosquito repellent because Gainesville known for their mosquitoes. I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> Your address is 619 South Main Street in Gainesville, Florida. For you that's using your GPS, 32601. You can get your tickets at Eventbrite. You have several um, tickets that you can get to. I'm not going into the prices on the air. But you have the Indocets Learn, Look, and Pass. You have the Indocets Meet, Party, and Pass. You have the Top Shelf Experience. And also what I love the best is Veterans. Hear me well. All my veteran friends out there in the 301st Field Hospital, and if you did sat the duty, Navy, Armed Forces, Armed Forces, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, you a veteran, I want to see your face in the place, because guess what? You are free 99. Once again, let me tell you again, veterans, you are free 99. I want to see all my vets in the place. That's right. Veterans, make sure you take advantage of this. And I want to thank, say thank 
thank you to the sponsors that's doing this. You, this is the reason, part of the reason why I agreed to doing this because you're looking out for people like myself. And that means a lot to me because I know it's a lot of veterans there that I serve with, with the 301st Field Hospital there in Gainesville is no longer activated now, but I still give them a shout out. Also, 58 Transportation Battalion out of Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri was my last duty station. So yes, you hear a lot more about active duty. You're going to hear a lot more about my Joan of Arc Award. Yes, I am a Joan of Arc Award recipient. Um, if you don't want to know what that is, look that up. I'll have the information for you about that as well. So that'll tell you about my stride and my personality where I keep doing what I do because I love our fellow soldiers and sailors and Marines, Coast Guard. If you lay stuff on boots, you've been on a boat, tank, whatever the case may be, hey, we love all of you because you got to stick together. I got your six, so... Guys, we're going to go ahead and cut this just a little bit short because I can't play no music on this format and I don't want to keep playing the commercials over and over again. Let me see one thing though real quick. I do believe I can do this because... Oh, I got another report. We got 12 tickets remaining. 12 tickets remaining. You want to go ahead and get that VIP, man. I seen that VIP and ooh wee. Yeah, that's what you want to be in. That is for sure. Let me go ahead and take that out like this. Okay. That was from earlier today. About did you um did y'all hear this morning show? We had was talking about legal weed companies. Then nobody wants to be employed. I don't know why everybody I know wants a job with um people that sell weed or do weed or whatever the case may be. New Jersey need to get on the ball, y'all. Trying to see what else is going on in the world of cannabis. This phone is running slow because it's been so busy. Okay, that's not what I want. Go ahead and clear that out. Let's see. Let's hit this like this. Hit this like this. Nope. Go back. Here we go again. There we are. Y'all know my phone raggedy. <laughs> I promise you I will have a better phone when I see y'all at Endo Sesh. Come on, baby. I know you're holding up the show. You're holding up the show. Let's go now. All right. There we are. Nope. I don't want that. Let's see. Do that like that. Cause there's one story I want to live with y'all real quick before I get off the air today. I swear Facebook keeps changing up stuff where you just leave the Facebook alone. Old people like myself can't handle all these changes. <laughs> Alrighty then, let's see. No, not that one. Oh, y'all, yeah. oh, real quick. Y'all got some controversy in Jacksonville right now. Um, I shared that one up on my page as well. Controversy. Jacksonville stores display a military flag caught on camera. Yeah, y'all got some news working on there. Y'all check that one out. And also, my last one, the last hit of the day, before we put this blunt out, is eating raw wheat prevents um, bowel cancer, fibromyalgia, and new, new diseases. That is true. Every chance I get, I eat my greens. Trust me, they're healthy for you. They're good for you. That's right. And they're not take that. They're, they're very good. I mean, you can't ask for nothing better. Just make sure you wash thoroughly if you don't know who you're getting your greens from. Okay. I gotta read this one. This is a post that's on from Greenwise TV, April 20th. Where will you be? Will you be at the inaugural Indo session? At Hardwood Sound State at Swap City Lounge, formerly Green Mellow Brut Bros Bros Consulting, Yes for Bud, Life at Life Resources, Life Trueville, at Smart Collectors, at Cannabis Headhunters, LLC, Platform Pills, Cannabis, the official Gainesville Chamber. Whoa! I'm going to be in there with some big company, guys. So, once again, thank y'all so very much for asking me to come out all the way from Rock Hill, South Carolina to give my opinions about my home state and my hometown of Gainesville. Y'all know I've been talking about Gainesville ever since I've been on the air. Matter of fact, I started talking about Gainesville in 2012 on Facebook and I continue to talk about Gainesville to now. And the reason why Gainesville is so important to me is this. When it's your hometown and you have 90% of your family still living there. You want your family to be well. And that's what I've always wanted for my family. I got at least 
and this is no joke. I'm going to put the picture up if I can get all of them together. I got at least 50 family members, at least, uh, between nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews. I got nieces and nephews I haven't even seen yet. So, yeah, when you got that many family members, you fight for what you love. And that's family first, always. So, keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. As we get ready to celebrate this this beautiful week of 420, it's going to be our weekend. Unfortunately, I won't be able to hang out with y'all like I want to unless transportation changes. I got to get back on the road on the 21st. But that is question mark, question mark. If things work out otherwise, I will let you know. If I can hang that other day, we will be in the area. So, for my friends and family from the class of 1980 Eastside High School, I hope to see some of you in the place as well. Because y'all can't lie. If you, especially if you was in the Marching 100, you know you got them aching knees from high stepping. You got them back pains and everything else through life. Come on and find out what cannabis is about and find out why I'm still doing what I'm doing at 56. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Cannabis has kept me young for over 40 years. But the thing is this. When you learn how to medicate and educate yourself, it's a difference. You can medic you medicate yourself every time you use cannabis. However, you don't do it the right way. Juicing and everything else, I try hard, and I mean 110% hard not to use blunt wraps. That is a no-no for me. I'd rather use hemp papers or hemp wraps. I have a hemp company that I'm in negotiations with right now. I hope it works out. I'm not going to call their name out until they do what they need to do. So just keep that in mind as well. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap up the show for the day. I hope you enjoyed everything. I got to get ready to finish packing and get everything straight for this trip on the road tomorrow to Gainesville. So, knowing all this, Rick, thank you so very much for letting me do what I do Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12.30 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We get to talk to a lot of great people. In these past, past five years, I've had some beautiful people to come through my life, and I hope and pray these next five years that it will be the same thing. By the next five years, I hope everybody will be able to use cannabis. And we're going to be talking about cannabis recipes. How cannabis is affecting your life far as your relationships and everything else. That's what I'm looking to see in the next five years. Not us always constant about the different laws in the different states. That's what I'm hoping for in the next five years. So, from the Rocky Mountain Tops of Denver, Colorado, all the way down to the clay here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. You've been informed and entertained, and I know you're laughing right now. Y'all saying that girl's so crazy. But I got one question for you. Are you awake yet? Hey, this has been Rosemary's, Rosemary's World of Cannabis. Check out the voice of Rosemary.com for more information as well. Minorities for Medical Marijuana, I love you. Canna Crocker, I love you as well. Um, Michelle Mamey, thank you so very much. Miss Lily, my girl. Thank you very much. And y'all get to see Smokey on too. And if you don't know who Smokey is, check out on my Facebook page as well. For now, guys, toodles.